So oftentimes manufacturers and vendors of microwave components and devices will provide measured S parameter data for their products. And this video is concerned with how to import and analyze this data using AWR Design Environment Microwave Office. <clears throat> so we're going to import data for a Wilkinson power divider. So let's quickly review how a Wilkinson power divider works. In this diagram I got from wikipedia.com or .org for a Wilkinson power divider. <clears throat> so it is a three port device. You could see it's labeled P1, P2, and P3 for ports 1, 2, and 3 respectively. And the device can be used as a power combiner or a divider. So if it's used as a divider, the power is incident at port 1 and you assume ports 2 and 3 are matched to 50 ohms. And in this case, for example, if 1 milliwatt is incident at port 1, then you'll have 0 0.5 milliwatts output here at port 2 and 0 0.5 milliwatt output at port 3. So it just, div it just divided the power in half. You can also use this device as a power combiner. And in that case, power port 1 is matched to 50 ohms. And if you have 1 milliwatt at ports 2 and 1 milliwatt at port 3, and the magnitude and phase of the signal are assumed to be equal, then the combined power will show up at port 2, will be output, or excuse me, will be output at port 1 rather. So that'll be 2 milliwatts. So again, 1 milliwatt at port 2, 1 milliwatt at port 3, you'll get 2 milliwatts at port 1. And so we're going to get our S parameter data from Marky Microwave. That's the vendor I, I chose. And so we go down here to Power Dividers under Products, and then Two-Way Wilkinson. Click on that. And here's a bunch of different models that they have, and then the S parameter data. So the model we are interested in is PD0128, this one. And so we click on this S parameter link and save the data. I'm going to move this to my desktop. And it's as saved as a zip file, so we're going to unzip it. I'm just going to double click and kind of move this file out. So here's the data file. It's in touchstone format. I'm going to open it quickly with Notepad. It's just a text file, and it contains all the frequencies that this device was measured at, and then the S parameter data, like magnitude and phase of S11, S12, S13, etc. So that's all this file is. Okay, let's open up Design Environment. Now we can look at this touchstone data um, without needing a circuit schematic or anything. Let's first import it. So I'm going to go to Projects, Add Data File, Import Data File, and go to my desktop, click on the file we just downloaded. We can ignore this warning box, and it's imported. So let's look at the data. We go to Graphs, right click, go New Graph, Rectangular. There's our new graph. I'm going to right click, Add New Measurements, and our data source name, let's make sure it's the file that we just downloaded. So there it is. In S11 and DB, so click here on DB and hit apply. S21 and DB, S31 and DB, and I think it hit analyze, yeah. So this is the data that's contained in that file, and it's measured from 10 to 20 gigahertz. Um, you can see over a pretty wide band, the return loss is less than, you know, around less than negative 15 dB, so it's very little reflection. And if we click, I don't know, around 10 gigahertz, we can see that S21 and S31 are both around negative 3.622 dB. The ideal case, it would be negative 3 dB. That would be 50% power split. But there's a little bit of power loss in the device itself, so it's not exactly three, negative 3 dB, but negative 3.615 dB. That's the insertion loss. And if we click, we can see that 
the data is quite smooth. There is no interpolation. This is, this is just the raw data in the touchstone file. OK, so let's now incorporate this data as a circuit element um, or into a circuit element that we could simulate and um, put in a schematic with other elements. So we go to circuit schematics. I right click and then click on new schematic. We'll leave the default name schematic one. I'm going to close this graph too. So here's our new schematic. So how do we access the sub circuit with the data? Well, we go down here to elements and we look up sub circuits and there's our model. So that touchstone file is linked to this sub circuit. And we can incorporate this in a circuit just as any other normal circuit element. Okay, so what we want to do is go to options, project options, and let's define our frequencies. We can go, I don't know, 3 to 8 gigahertz with steps of 0 0.01. Hit apply. Let's make our global units gigahertz and hit OK. And we can put ports on this, just treating this sub circuit as a standard circuit element. So make port 1 connected to 1. Port 2 connected to 2, and port 3, I'm going to rotate, connected to 2. Oh, let's not be confusing. Port 2 will be connected to 2. Rotate back. Like that, and port 3 to port 3. Okay. And then we can go to project, graphs, new graph. Let's look at the Smith chart. Create. Add new measurement, and let's look at S11. And there's S11. You can see for most of the frequency range, it's very close to the center of the Smith chart, which means it's well matched. You can click on this and see what each data point, how what, what frequency it corresponds to. It's 1.392 gigahertz, etc. Add new measurement. Let's see what S. 2, 2 looks like. Analyze. And there's S2, 2, very similar to S1, 1, very well matched. Okay, let's close this graph. Let's make a new graph and go to rectangular. And add new measurement and let's go S1, 1 and DB. So I click on the DB, apply. Oh, we got to choose our source name. So let's actually delete this measurement. So go back, add new measurement, and it's important to pick your source. So we want schematic 1, S11DB, S21DB, S31DB, and simulate. And now it's just simulating from 3 to 8 gigahertz with the step size that we chose, 0 0.01 gigahertz. Okay. Let's go back to our circuit schematic. Um, let's look at this device. Let's see how it works as a power combiner more explicitly. So I'm going to click on port 2, click on port, and go to source as a port type. I'm going to do that with port 3. Now these are sources, and in fact, the power is 0 dBm, which means 1 milliwatt. 0 dBm, 1 milliwatt. So in the ideal case, we would expect 1 plus 1 to equal 2 milliwatts to show up at port 1. Let's see what happens in this real case. So new graph, rectangular, add new measurement, make sure our data source is schematic 1. And let's go to nonlinear in the measurement type, power, and then click here at PT, total power. Click off DBM, apply, reanalyze. And it's not quite 2 milliwatts, but it's close. It's you know around 1.8 milliwatts of power. So where's the missing power? A small fraction of the power is reflected back, but most of it is just lost due to most likely conductor losses. So we would expect, in the ideal case, again, 2 milliwatts. 1 plus 1 is 2, but we're getting a little less than 2. I'm going to delete these ports. Now, just for fun, before we end the video, we're going to create 
a four-way divider or four-way combiner. Same thing. So we can use three Wilkinson power dividers to do this. I'm going to click, Control C, Control V, and Control V. So here's three of them. All you got to do is connect them like this. Okay, let's get our port one here. We're going to consider our port one to be our output or termination. So our port type, just leave it termination. You don't need to do anything. And then we need four ports for our sources. I'm going to rotate that port. And then control C, control V, control V, control V. And here's our four ports. And I'm going to make them sources. So I double click and go to port tab, port type source. Uh, let's do the same for each. So source, source. Okay. And then we connect them up like this. So each of these sources, as indicated here, is 0 dBm, which means 1 milliwatt. So 1 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1. 4 milliwatts you would expect at to show up at port 1 in the ideal case, of course. Um, but because there's losses and a little bit of reflection, it's not going to be exactly 4 milliwatts. But let's see what it's going to be. So graphs, new graphs, rectangular, add new measurement, data source is schematic 1, port 1, and it's already at power. And it's showing nothing like what we're expecting. And it does this sometimes. Sometimes it there's there's an error that I've noticed in the port number relative to the schematic, because this is definitely port one. So let's go add new measurement and port five. So in this case, and I actually don't know how to completely fix this, it's treating port 5 as this port here, even though it's labeled port 1. So that seems to be some kind of bug in the program, or something I'm not thinking of. But it's clearly labeled as P1, and yet it's treating that as port 5. So that is something to look out for. What if we change this to 7? Go to graphs, add new measurement. And it doesn't like that because they must be continuous. And isn't that strange? And then I go back to the schematic, I analyze, and now port 1 is what we think it is. And port 5 is different. So that's just something to watch out for. Um, really nothing has changed, but all of a sudden port 1 is, is where port 5 was. Strange. Anyway, I'll leave this in the video just so you can see that maybe there's some kind of bug there and you need to watch out when you're dealing with these port numbers sometimes. It seemed like it was fixed when the schematic was highlighted and I hit analyze. But I'm not sure. In any event, you can see that at port 1 we're getting a little less than 4 milliwatts, you know, even closer to 3 milliwatts. You would expect 4 in the ideal case and we're getting more closer to 3 and that's because of the losses in the device itself. Not all the power is making it to port one. So this video, we basically covered how to import and analyze measured S parameter data from a vendor. And I would actually like to say one thing before we close. Now this data is pretty smooth. You can see it's a little bumpy. Sometimes it's going to be really bumpy, and you can smooth things out by going to Options, Project Options, 
interpolation passivity, and then changing the interpolation option to a rational or a spline curve. Giving another shot will sometimes smooth out noisy data. All right, so that concludes this video.